Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, and just thank you so much for stopping by today. This is Ryan, my new little guy, my new little pup. I'm gonna be folding laundry. I thought I'd bring you guys along with maybe talk to you guys about some stuff. Not sure what I'll talk about yet, but we'll find out. Yeah, so let's, I guess I have a big thing right here. I was almost caught up on laundry and then I got a cold and then I, which I'm feeling much better from. But I got behind the laundry again. <laughs> it's never ending cycle. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Oh gosh. Mm. Ah, there we go. How's everybody else doing? Let me know down in the comment section how you guys are all doing. Oh, guys, we've been just hanging in there. It's interesting not having Rexley back in in-person school, so just getting back in the hang of that and the schedule of that. Leave down in the comment section, are your kids in school or doing in-person school or virtual school? We did virtual for the first portion of like the semester, first start of the school year, but we decided to have him go back just because he wasn't doing well with online stuff. I mean, he was doing well, like, because he's super smart, but not doing well in the sense of focus with online stuff. Especially having younger siblings at home, they're playing, he wants to play, that kind of thing. They're playing with sand and Play-Doh. Jeffrey's doing some dishes. All the fun stuff. Guys, my depression is doing so much better. I was having a really rough go with it. It's kind of, um, it's been hard because, like, so the reason I started my YouTube channel was, like, one of the reasons was because I wanted to make friends and stuff because I was feeling lonely and I thought, oh, that's a great way, which, like, I have made friends from YouTube and that's great, but, guys, I did not realize how <laughs> being on social media made me feel more alone than I was feeling before. And so I had to like kind of reevaluate everything. Um, I think it's just because you like see all these people and everything that they're doing and how they have friends and the kind of friendships they have and then you start, start kind of like comparing yourselves to that. It's easier when you don't have like expectations like that, you know? And you kind of get wrapped up in like all the stuff that you're supposed to do with social media. And that's the thing, like I've never done the channel to get like a bunch of followers. Like, is it cool that I have 300 some followers? Yeah, that's like really awesome that I have subscribers. And a lot of them have become my friends, like that's awesome. But I've never been into it just for the numbers. Like that's, you know, and honestly that's, I stopped doing a lot of like the collaborations, um, like the open collaborations, because I feel like a lot of people do that. Not saying like if you do that, that you're, you know, that's what you're doing, but a lot of people do open collaborations to get subscribers and um, stuff like that. And so I've only been doing open collaborations if I get invited by, like, by the actual person to do them. Um, Otherwise, I've just really been having fun filming my own content, what I want, you know. And that's the thing, too, when you get into all those. Because when I first started my channel, I was doing so many open collaborations. Um, and it just gets to a point of, like, you're not doing your content you want to do. You feel like you have to do, like, this specific content, you know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making any sense. But it got overwhelming, and I just didn't feel like myself. And I don't want to be something that I'm not. And that's I had to reevaluate. And you guys, if you focus on things that make you happy, you know, because too, I'm, I don't like being a fake. I'm, I'm not a fake person. I won't be a fake person. And so for me, like, if I did those open collaborations, like, I wanted to, like, see everybody's videos and then I wanted to watch. You know, I wanted to keep up with everybody's videos and that got overwhelming to a point of I felt so much guilt because I wasn't watching all these other people, all these other creators that I had become friends with all their videos. 
and so that was mentally dragging on me because I'm like, oh, well, I'm not being a good friend because I'm not keeping up with their videos, and then that got me really down, and like, I was watching so many other videos, I wasn't doing stuff that made me happy, you know? And so I think just kind of stepping back, reevaluating, being like Jesse, like, you know, you have to do like what makes you happy, you know? And if those people don't understand, then, you know, they're not obviously the kind of friends you want anyways, you know? It's like, I'm a mom of three, <laughs> I'm so busy. I have so much stuff I have to do. And at the end of the day, sitting on my phone watching 80 bajillion videos, like, yes, I like to watch videos, but, you know, there's other TV shows I like to watch that I'm so behind on. Um, there's things like, you know, I had all these goals for the new year, like um, exercising daily, and which that kind of took a plunge with my depression, um, but I'm getting back into it. Um, I hang my shirts, so that's why I don't. I have a file over there <laughs> but um like I had a goal to have read a book a month and which luckily I did get my first book read for the month of June I, I kind of rushed it but I did get that done so read that book and I read um, Life is Short, No Pun Intended. It's by Jennifer Arnold and Bill Klein. Um, they're the little couple on TV. I absolutely adore them. They're a sweet couple and I like how they don't let like basically their stature get in the way of them in their dreams. Most people would call their stature a disability. I don't see it that way because it's kind of like me having high function autism. A lot of people say it's a disability. I don't like seeing it that way. It's just who I am. And that's kind of, they see their stature as, you know, who they are. And I absolutely adore that and love that. And so they are a great, nice couple. I really enjoy them. And their children are adorable. Um, so yeah, I got that book read. And then I'm reading their other book. Um, that's my book for this month. It is Think Big is what it's called. So, started that. I did the first chapter of that one. Yeah, I at least got that done. So that made me really happy because it was something that it was just so nice to relax, not think about anything. And that's my uh, videos kind of got, oh, I haven't been posting, like I've been posting videos, but um, I haven't been as focused on making sure I get them on every day that I said I was going to. I mean, my main focus, probably from now on, there will always be a Taste Test Tuesday video, because me and Jeffrey really enjoy doing those. And then probably the What's For Dinners on Wednesdays, and then the grocery haul will either be on Friday or Saturdays. Um, and then throw a video in there every, you know, once in a while, some other day of the week, um, like either Monday or Friday, something like that. So yeah, that'll be my new schedule. I mean, it's not new. I mean, it's kind of what I've been doing for the most part. Anyways, but just a few less days. And I want to say thank you so much, guys, to all the people that have been supporting me, doing, like, more of the gluten-free eating. Guys, update on that. My stomach has felt so good. I have not had acid reflux flare-ups. That's been amazing. Um, I just felt so much better. My tummy's felt good. More energy. So... I'm gonna keep continuing with that because it is making me feel good. Like I said, guys, don't worry. I will still post non-gluten, you know, some gluten foods because my family still eats gluten and that's okay. That's the thing, you guys. Just gonna work whatever works for you and, you know, do that, whatever your diet, Terry needs are. Guys, this basket. It's gonna be a while. gives me time to talk to you guys about stuff. So yeah, my depression is doing much better, kind of focusing more on myself and things that are making me happy. And I love making content for you guys. That makes me happy. So it's just, I'm cutting down on watching videos from other creators, which I feel bad about, but at the same time, 
if that's what's gonna help me mentally, then hopefully they'll understand. I mean, they say they're my friends, so not a big issue. And that's the thing, you gotta take time to like sit there and focus, like what's gonna make you happy? Like, you know, and I think like, so there's, and that's Jeffrey and I have talked about this a lot recently. I feel like there's this like societal pressure and kind of thing about like you have to have a purpose, like you have to do stuff, you know. And I think the thing when you stop looking for your purpose, like it just kind of falls into place. And it, I think ultimately everybody's purpose is to live. Like, I feel like we get so wrapped up with everything going on in our lives. We don't enjoy those little moments. And I feel like if we took the time to enjoy those little things, like I was reading the Think Big book and in the first chapter, Bill was talking about how, you know, he was like learning to ride his bike and just like the wind on his face and all this stuff, like how amazing it was. And I told Jeffrey, I was like, when's the last time you felt that just simplistic joy over a little thing and it's hard because i feel like you know like i said we get so wrapped up in our lives you don't take the time to enjoy like those things you know like this morning i woke up and the sun was outside and just like I took a moment to appreciate just something that simple that brought me joy. Because guys, it's been dreary up here. I'm so ready for spring. I saw a meme on uh, on Facebook or no, it was Instagram, and it said, "Can can summer be here so I can start complaining about it being hot and so cold?" <laughs> so true. Oh. So. I just need to focus on those little things in life that make me happy and stop focusing on, you know, negativity or things that don't bring me joy. I sound like the Marie Kondo, Kondo lady, Kondo? Marie, whatever that lady's name is, the lady that says, you know, keep the things that bring you joy. <laughs> That's what I need to do, you know, keep things that bring me joy do that with my life instead you know yeah so so I'm doing focusing on myself and things that bring me joy and you know I feel like it's really improved and that's I you know got in that mood and guys there's other things that have come into play to obviously get me into that mood it wasn't just the YouTube stuff um, other personal things in my life um, I have like a huge issue with <laughs> and that's the thing like guys I do so much better alone than I do um, with people and I know that sounds horrible a that's part of my Asperger's but also B that's part of all the stuff I've gone through in my life. I've been so hurt by so many people, like literally trusting anyone is so hard for me. Like, and that's the thing, cause I not only have I have been hurt by like random people that didn't really like, you know, matter too much, but I've been hurt by the people that um, matter the most to me and are supposed to love me the most. And um, I feel like that's hard when you get hurt by those people because it really messes with you. Oh, no. My dance broke. Not a lot of strong. Maybe the string just came out. It's probably somewhere in there. We'll see. Hopefully, I can find it. Um. But I've been hurt by some of the people that are supposed to, you know, love me the most and mean the most to me. And I think that's the hardest thing to trust people after that, especially when you've been hurt by almost every single one. And it comes blindly out of nowhere. Um, it's really hard to deal with. And should I go to therapy? Probably. Use therapy. Therapy's expensive. I don't know if my insurance, the insurance we had didn't cover it. 
we have new insurance. I should check into that because I would love to get back into therapy. I think that would really help. Um, but that's it. You know, I don't think I've not been hurt by somebody I really love. And um, like even Jeffrey's hurt me and you know, not like physically, but like mentally. And I've lashed out on him, you know, because I feel safe. And I, so most of the time I think it's more of like a defense mechanism of trying to protect myself and pushing him away when I feel like he gets too close. Um, I'm a self-sabotager for sure, you know. And that's what I told Jeffrey, I was like, I do so good in friendships as like, I'm, I, I can be a very good friend. But when I sit there and think about it, I have also become a really crappy friend because it's hard for me to interact with people and try to get close to them because I'm scared to get close to people. But at the same time, if I like you and I care about you and you texted me meeting me in any moment, I would be there. You know, it wouldn't matter, you know. It's just me, it's who I am, but yeah, that's a lot of that hurt happened after my mom died. I have the last, the, basically the three to four years after my mom died were the hardest I have ever, how I made it through that. And I've had so many people tell me just, I don't know how you got through that time. I don't, because of everything that I went through. It was hard and I'm not gonna sit here and lie and be like, oh yeah, it was a walk in the park. Like, no, it was extremely hard and extremely depressing. And that's one thing I love about Jeffrey is because he stood by my side through all of that and he helped me and didn't bat an eye to it. I mean, you know, he could have definitely not put up with a lot of my stuff back then, you know, I, like, it was really bad there for a while, there was, like, probably three or four different occasions Jeffrey had to take me to the hospital to get fluids after I drank too much, I probably should have had my, pump, my stomach pumped, um, it was pretty bad, because I drank too much, because I just didn't want to feel... I mean, the trigger warning, but I didn't want to feel the feelings that I was feeling, and I didn't care. Was I a little suicidal? Probably. Sadly. I say that the best thing that ever happened to me was my children, because um, they saved my life, in a sense, because I live for them, and, you know, they're the light in my day when my days are dark, and they push me to continue, so. Don't worry, guys. I only get in those moods every once in a great while, and like I said, I have my kids, so I would never do anything to hurt myself. But real talk, you know. I think everybody at some point has gone through something in their life that has made them feel that way, and you know, that's the thing, I feel like it's hard for me because I grew up in a family, bless my mother's heart, love her, but she always made what was going on in my life feel less than. So if I had something going on, she always had something that she had experienced that was worse. So that's, I have that mentality of um, when I'm experiencing something or feeling something, I tend to belittle my, belittle my feelings and say, well, Jesse, somebody else has it worse or somebody's going through something worse than what you're going through. What you're going through is so little and minuscule. But realistically, it is so okay to feel the feelings that you're feeling and to feel those feelings. I feel like there's such a stigma around depression and a stigma around um, letting people express themselves when that like th there's this like <laughs> you can't express when you're not feeling okay like it's not okay to be negative only positivity and the thing is is in human life you're going to experience negativity and it's okay to express those feelings 
and to feel those feelings and to talk with those feelings to other people. And if there are people that don't support you when you are in those moments where you need somebody to talk to you or need support, you know those aren't true friends. Those are people that are self-absorbed and um, or those are people that don't know how to handle those kinds of things. But at the same time, a true friend and a true good person will sit there and support you when you need it, you know? They'll be there during the dark moments, they'll be there during the happy moments, sad moments, all of it. And um, you should always be able to express when you're feeling things and I always tell my children all the time, especially when they're upset, it is okay to feel all the feelings that you are feeling right now and, and that's okay, you know? Don't hide your feelings of, you know, and then that's the thing, I think you try to stay strong and all these feelings build up and that's when you burst and I feel like you just need to express them and feel them and that's the thing, feel them, acknowledge them and move on. That is the best tip I can give you when you're feeling feelings. You know, and if you need help, reach out to somebody, you know. There's no shame in asking for help when you feel like you need it. But yeah, that's, you know, some of the stuff I've been going through when dealing with. Um, I think that's the thing that kind of made me feel lonely on social media because I felt like I had to hide the emotions I was feeling. I couldn't express them because there's such a negative stigma around showing how you truly feel because, you know, people want to follow positive people, which I totally get, like, and that's okay. Like, I love following positive people and that brightens my day, but at the same time, like I said, I feel like it's unrealistic for people to not have days where they're not doing okay, and that's okay. And they should be able to express that, so. Anyway, just some Jesse thoughts, you know. But dealing with all the things and like just kind of reevaluating, step back, reevaluate everything that I was going through, that really helped with my emotions and my feelings. I'm doing so much work. I'm thankful that I allowed myself to feel all the feelings that I was feeling, you know. It's okay to not be happy 24-7. I think it's unrealistic unless you have a really happy life, which if that is the case for you, like, you know, that is awesome, you know? Anyways, guys, that's just been a little bit of, you know, like I said, what's going on, but yeah, I thought I would discuss it with you guys because, you know, I think there's so many people that feel the same way as me. It's a lot to go through, and especially if you don't have a huge support system. Like, I don't have a huge support system, and that's... I've had a really hard time because one of the people that are huge in my support system, um... I think they're just going through their own stuff, but the other day, like, I mean, I haven't talked to them in a while, and I think that's the hard thing because then those abandonment thoughts, because I've been abandoned by a lot of people in my life, you know, those thoughts come up in my head, and then the Jesse of the, you're not good enough, people don't like you, there's something wrong with you, what'd you do, you know, you're a bad person, like, you know, those negative thoughts creep into your head, but that's not always the case, and you just gotta brush those thoughts off, because I'm so ready for spring, <laughs> is anybody else ready for spring? I am dreary we got seven inches of snow oh guys that stupid rodent said six more weeks of winter i'm feeling it yep jeffrey and me were giggling at that the other day because i'm like realistically there's gonna be six more weeks of winter anyways Real life, Ronan's having a meltdown in the background. <laughs> but yeah, realistically, there's six more weeks of winter regardless. So, it's 
technically spring starts in March. So close enough to six, six weeks. I'm so excited though for when it warms up because I have so many ideas of things I want to do. Get outside, I want to go on a walk. Guys, I need to get Riley some booties for like, because especially for the summer months, I want to go on walks because I don't want him to burn his little paws. I need to look on Amazon and find some little dog boots for him. I should get him some for the winter, but winter is basically almost over. We'll be looking for those soon. And then we got these new bed sheets, which I'm so excited about. We got them off Amazon. They're only like $17. It was like king size ones. And they were $17. And they're the jersey knit. They're super stretchy. And that's, I had bought a bed sheet from Walmart. And guys, it was so frustrating. It would not stay on the bed for anything. It kept like coming off the corners. That is the worst. So I think if we like these, we're gonna order another pair and probably a different color. I'd sent these to Jeffrey and he didn't like really look like they had multiple colors. I just went ahead and ordered this, which is fine. It's great. It goes with everything. So yeah, we need to get new like comforters. Guys, if you struggle with your partner on like bed, sh like comforters, like, you know, cause everybody's like, oh, they steal the sheets. Me and Jeffrey fixed that problem early on in our relationship. We each have our own. We have our own <laughs> comforter. And then you don't have to, you know, worry about somebody stealing sheets. I like to cocoon myself, so. Just a little tip. <laughs> Try that out. I'm not in it for the aesthetics. I'm in it for the comfort. Which, like, you can make your bed and just put, like, you know, put one sheet on top the other kind of situation. Nobody knows you have two. I'm not a person that makes my bed though. <laughs> Probably should be, but I don't. But we don't ever have company over, so I'm like the only person that I would be impressing is myself. And yeah, I don't need to impress myself over my <laughs> making my bed. Especially because it's like, you know, by the time you get done with your day, you just want to jump in it anyways. getting harder because Renan is in some of the same sizes as Ruxley for like shirts and stuff and the boys both their pants like they're like is that Ruxley's pants or is that Renan's pants so then I have to look at the tag Ron's easy because she's the only girl I have but the boys the boys it's complicated oh yeah, I'm so excited. I'm gonna like I'm gonna go take the kids to the zoo. Like I'm just ready for the COVID thing to be over in general though. Cause it's like, you know, I wanna take kids to go do a bunch of stuff. I do think I wanna get a pool this summer, like a bigger pool. I think that'd be so much fun. I think all the kids would really enjoy that. I need to get Rowan signed up for dance lessons because we had signed up for dance lessons at the beginning of the year and then COVID hit and we had already paid for the class, but it's through the city and the city basically was like, gave us like a positive credit, but didn't give us our money back for the class, which I think is so stupid, but whatever. Um, they don't, they haven't, you know, had any more classes because of COVID. So you haven't been able to use the refund. So gonna, or not refund, but the positive credit. So I'm gonna have to look. I think, I don't know, we'll see. Find her some kind of dance class because she's been itching so bad to get back into dance. She loves to dance. And then I wanna get the boys signed up for some kind of class because I feel like, especially Renan. All right guys, I'm back. Renan was having a meltdown because he wanted to play with Play-Doh, which they were playing with sand, and then he put all the stuff away really upset about that. I don't know. But I learned how to take a bath and he's a happy boy so that's all that matters. <laughs> My kids love to take baths and that's what I was getting into. I think I want to get the boys signed, well the boys and Rowan signed up for swim lessons because they've never taken those before and I think that's kind of important. So, so yeah and get them signed up for that. Rowan signed up for dance class. All the things guys. It's just been so hard with COVID. <laughs> you know, I don't even know if they're gonna do swim lessons. 
can they do swim lessons? You can't wear a mask in the pool, so I don't know how that works. You can't stay six feet away from the instructor. We live in weird times, guys. Ready for normalcy. Rexley got his report card back, guys, and he did so good. I am so proud of him. He is pretty much excelling at almost everything, which has me super happy. He's so smart, guys. I think he's going to be a paleontologist when he's older. That's what he keeps telling me he wants to do, so I believe him, you know? Kids love dinosaurs from... It, he, I think he would like do like a dual thing where he would like do paleontology and animal stuff because he loves both. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he ends up going into when he gets older. But he's always had a love for both animals and dinosaurs. So we shall see. No, I don't know. She loves horses. She loves dance. She loves singing and being quite the little character. So I don't know what she'll get into. And Ren Renan's like, he loves Spongebob and, uh, he loves Spongebob and Paw Patrol <laughs> and, oh, he's been getting into the, like, he loves Blippi, which Blippi is such a good show. If you've never watched Blippi on YouTube, you should totally go watch it because it's such an educational show for kids and they absolutely love it. All my kids do. And guys, that's another thing. Um, back when, like, the whole, uh pandemic thing hit and all the kids were at home and all that the kids love to do cosmic kids yoga i will leave the links for those channels down below if you have kids and you want to go check it out the cosmic kids yoga it's like a kids yoga and she does all these really fun like adventures and stuff my kids absolutely love it they relax get some energy and wiggles out absolutely love it And that's, I found some dance classes that you can do on YouTube too. And I've been doing those with Rowan on the occasion. And I need to be more like, you know, it's just hard with our schedule being consistent with it. But I need to. She absolutely loves it. So. I wasn't joking. I love Audrey, guys. So much. How do you guys fold your towels? I'm like one of those tuck and roll. I used to not be that way. I didn't become that way with my towels. I used to be one of those people that just like, uh, here, I'll show you that. I used to be one of those people. Yes, my laundry is all wrinkly. I used to be one of those people that did one of these things. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the tuck and roll looks a little bit nicer. So, anyway, I need to make myself some lunch. It's currently 1.49. I have not had lunch, guys. Jeffrey and the kids had Subway, but I didn't want to eat Subway because obviously it's not gluten-free. I don't want my tummy. I, guys, I'm occasionally if I want something that's not gluten-free, I'll probably eat it and deal with the tummy upset, but... I just felt so good, I don't wanna ruin it. So, I'm gonna make myself, I have gluten-free bread, which I've really been enjoying the Canyon, um, bake, I think it's a Canyon Baking Company, or just Canyon, Canyon Bread. I'll leave like a link to their website down below if you guys wanna see it. I've really been enjoying their, non-sponsored by the way, but I've really been enjoying their gluten-free bread. It's so good. And we bought some, we had to run to the store because we had a cat food. I didn't film that for you guys. I wish I would have. We were out of cat food and dog food and like wet food for the cat and stuff like that. So we had to go pick that up. And so I grabbed some like lunch meat because I've really been enjoying having like a lot like a, like a melt basically. So I got like ham, like honey ham, honey turkey. It's the Prima Rosa. I don't know. I don't know, it's like the deli version, like, uh, from Walmart. Like, they have, they had, like, originally, like, the deli at Walmart, but now they have, like, a little case of, like, fresh-cut deli, um, uh, meat that they keep, all, like, prepackaged and ready for you, kind of, well, not prepackaged, well, is it prepackaged? 
no, packaged up and ready for you basically to take. So we got that. So I think I'm gonna make myself a kind of melt situation for lunch. I'll do that after I get done with the late laundry. I wasn't hungry. We had like a, I had a late breakfast because I slept in guys, so amazing. Jeffrey let me sleep and that's, I am like, my kids. So it's hard with the routine that we have with school because we get up at five o'clock in the morning to get everybody like ready and going for the day. And I'm the kind of person that I thrive on kind of like waking up and then slowly getting out of bed, not like being like, okay, gotta get up, gotta go. And so I gotta do that this morning and it felt so good. I need to do that more on Jeffrey's days off to just help because I am a morning person, but not if I'm thrust into being woken up. <laughs> Kids. Yeah, my kids are up at like four o'clock every morning. I set my alarm for five, but they're up at four. So, yeah, it's been so much fun. <laughs> and they go to bed like lately. It's been like six or seven, sometimes eight o'clock, when they fall asleep. They're still up at four. I'm waiting for the day when they're teenagers and yeah, my top guys, I use stuff until I can't use it anymore. No judgment. I've had this towel for 11 years, <laughs> over 11 years. <laughs> it still works. Um, I don't even know what I was talking about. Oh, I know like everybody's like, oh, sleep when your baby sleeps. And my kids are like, you know, Brennan's going to be turning three here in March. So they're getting so big, but people are like, oh, you know, someday they'll sleep, you know, when they're teenagers. Yeah. And I'm going to wake them up at four o'clock in the morning and jump on their bed saying, it's morning, it's morning, it's morning. <laughs> Cause that's what they do to me. It's the best way to get woken up, you know? I'm sure they're gonna love that when they're teenagers. <laughs> Mama jumping on their bed, screaming about it being morning. Yeah, I can't wait to do that to them. I think <laughs> it'll be so fun. <laughs> Waiting for the day too when they get, you know, when they're teenagers and hopefully have a better palate than they have now and actually like to eat my food. <laughs> I don't relish that. I don't want them to grow up that fast. They've already, I can't believe Renan's turning three. It blows my freaking mind. Cause Rowan, Ruxley is in kindergarten. Rowan starts preschool in August and then Renan will start preschool the following August. Guys. And then I'm gonna have a house all by myself for a day. I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. I actually get laundry done. <laughs> Maybe. I'll have time to do things. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Uh -oh. All the things. I gotta go shopping for his birthday present soon. I think I'm going to get him some blippy stuff because he's been so obsessed with blippy lately. And I've seen that Walmart has some blippy toys and stuff. So. Yeah. Laundry. I don't mind folding laundry. I don't mind doing laundry, but I don't like his socks. <laughs> socks is the worst part of laundry because I feel like I always can't find, like they magically, the other pair disappears that matches with the one pair. It eats it. I don't get it. <laughs> A dryer just like disappear. How cute is this shirt? Ruxley wore this recently. So he wore it for his school photos this year. He had like a winter concert situation and he wore that. It was adorable. He was so cute. I need to figure out how to send that to my dad because I know my dad wants to watch it, but he doesn't have email and um, you have to have an email account to like, because it was sent by email. So, gotta figure out how to get that sent to him. 
guys a little update of stuff that's going on and I can't stress it enough if you are struggling with your mental health don't be afraid to reach out go see a professional there's no shame in that to talk to somebody sometimes we all need a little help you know get all this laundry put away. I have to deal with the socks. So much fun. <laughs> Got a decent pile. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for coming along with me today. It's been an interesting video, a different kind of video for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed chatting with me. I always enjoy chatting with you guys. You know, leave stuff down in the comment section and chat with me. I love talking to you guys. It makes my day. Your comments are always the best. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up, press that like button, subscribe to my channel, click that little notification bell button so you're notified every time I post a new video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!